Hello and welcome to Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Mr. Tillman Werner from our German office. He is a malware researcher in Kaspersky Lab's German office. He's also a member of the board of directors of the HoneyNet project and considered an authority on botnets. So I brought Tillman today to talk about uh, what kinds of activity we are seeing around botnets in the world today. Uh, a lot of talk in the media and uh, you know at security conferences and among researchers about peer-to-peer -peer botnets. In the, it, it's n n not entirely new, but in the past we've heard that you know peer-to-peer -peer botnets are interesting, but they're not necessarily going to present a clear and present danger going forward. Uh, has that prediction held true? And uh, what kinds of things you're seeing around peer-to-peer -peer botnet activity today? So I would say that prediction has not held true. Um, I mean, we see some new peer-to-peer -peer botnets uh, arising every now and then, but there is only like a dozen. Um, and I guess that is because peer-to-peer -peer botnets are fairly complex con um, compared to the traditional centralized ones. And of course, as we all know, a complex IT system also introduces vulnerabilities. It's harder to maintain, harder to operate. And I guess that is why there are only so few. But aren't they harder to take down as well? Because there's been a lot of activity around takedowns with Microsoft and some other security legal initiatives to take down some of the bigger botnets, Breda Lab, Walidak, and some of the other botnets. Uh, explain the pros and cons from the bad guy's perspective to use a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, infrastructure versus using traditional. Yeah, that, that's actually an, a very interesting point because, um, I mean, everybody believes that peer-to-peer -peer botnets are harder to take down because that's the point of having a decentralized right. architecture, right? But usually um, the opposite is the case because um, in a peer-to-peer -peer botnet, it's very easy to introduce your own um, components, your own monitors, your own systems that then take part in the architecture and so they are usually easier to infiltrate and to monitor and also to take down. I mean it takes a lot more effort from the analyst's perspective but um, the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, technology itself opens up many ways for attacks. You're saying there's only a few of them uh, that you're monitoring or we're seeing. Uh, what's the typical size of one of these botnets or do we know? Um, sometimes when we are lucky we are able to crawl or to enumerate the, the number of machines or the bots that, that participate in peer-to-peer -peer botnet. Um, Walladeck was a couple of uh, tens of thousands. Storm was, um, I think, more, uh, slightly more than a million. Mm -hmm. So that's already quite big. Uh, but usually we don't know the exact size. And I have to say that size isn't too important because, I mean, it all depends on the context, right? If you have a number, uh, a couple of thousand bots, you can already knock any site off the internet with a DDoS attack, for example. Right. Whereas if you want to, for example, distribute spam, more right. machines are better. Are peer-to-peer -peer botnets better for, for DDoSing or, or it's basically the same thing? In, 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 botnet, in, in your botnet research world, what are, what are some of the more you know, dangerous botnets being used for today? I think when it comes to which botnets are more dangerous, there is no real difference between peer-to-peer -peer and centralized botnets. It takes a bit more time to uh, distribute commands or to propagate commands in a peer-to-peer -peer botnet, uh, naturally, and that's a lot quicker in centralized botnets, but otherwise there's no real difference. Have you seen any activity on the bad guy's side and the botnet operator's side uh, to evolve and make any sort of technological changes or any sort of changes in response to the botnet takedown activity, the legal law enforcement type things? Because, uh, you know, this botnet fight and takedown has always been a cat and mouse game. These guys evolve, you do something else, they evolve, you do something else. Uh, the, the, the recent takedown activity has been pretty significant. Have you seen any sort of activity from their side to change things and make it much more difficult to avoid detection, to avoid takedowns? Not really. I wouldn't say that they, um, that they change their strategies too much. I mean, we still have hundreds of thousands probably of IRC based botnets, so rather old technology and HTTP. Uh, some people think that centralized botnets are rather outdated, but still we have them. The majority of botnets are centralized. Um, and also what we see is botnet get, botnets get taken down, but uh, new generations make the same mistakes. So right. I'm not too sure. I, I wouldn't be too concerned about the bad guys um, adapting right. um, to. One thing, that, one thing that's always come to mind for me is uh, we hear about the size of these botnets. Uh, you know, you just mentioned tens of thousands, perhaps a million. You hear about the danger from these botnets. I mean, big, big companies are being taken offline uh, from DDoS attacks. But the, 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 the spate of arrests, and the, the, it doesn't match. You know, we get a guy arrested here or a guy arrested there. It doesn't match the, the, the danger. 
why aren't there more arrests or why aren't there more uh, law enforcement convictions against botnets? And, uh, you know, is there a worry that maybe a lot of the takedown activity is only tied to uh, 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 legal, a, a legal case against someone and not, yeah. you know, just take yeah, down yeah. in general? You know, I think you understand you're right. what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So I, I think it's twofold. Uh, first off, um, law enforcement usually wants to put somebody behind bars. So if there is a, it's a bad chance that they can, well, find the people responsible, then they won't take actions. But that's not, from my point of view, that's not enough um, because it's also their responsibility to protect people, not only to, you know, prosecute um, right. criminals, it's also their responsibility to, to protect people. So they should also become more active uh, in, um, well, taking, te taking technical measures. Do you, think, uh, do you think a lot of these big new DDoS attacks against big brands and big businesses today, I mean, over the last, let's say, two or three months, do you think that kind of raises awareness in the minds of important law enforcement folks and maybe lobby groups globally to uh, you know, assist uh, organizations like the HoneyNet Project? And do you think you might be able to, that these help you to get more resources and more, uh, a more understanding to energize the fight against botnets? Do you think it helps the fight? Hmm. I would wish so, but I think currently it's not happening yet. I mean, there are some uh, very uh, some popular cases right now in the media, uh, but they are not necessarily related to botnets. Um, so I don't really know if the policymakers uh, understand the botnet phenomenon yet. Um, but of course, it's our job to right to advise. Explain them. the perfect world scenario to me as a botnet fighter. In a perfect world, what would happen? Is it better law enforcement coordination? A more streamlined approach to takedowns, more arrests, what in your mind, in, you know, just sum up for me in a, in a sentence, what, what would a bot fighters, botnet fighters dream be? You know what I'm saying? What's, what's the perfect yeah. scenario for you? So um, I guess it's, it's, uh, for me it would be anything that changes the picture in a way that, that operating botnets, that creating botnets uh, is not beneficial or doesn't, doesn't pay anymore. Uh, I mean, it's not always about money, but uh, right. in any so it's right. attacking. It's attacking the business model, right? The business model, but uh, I mean, if some botnets might be, or some operations might be put politically or socially motivated. Right. Um, but anything that changes this picture, arresting people, um, taking tech, taking technical measures, political measures, laws, all these things are important. And if we manage, so the utopia would be to to manage to change the picture in a way that uh, it's not. Uh, it doesn't really pay to operate a botnet anymore. Thank you very much, Tilman. Thank Appreciate you. it. And thank you for watching an audio edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some other webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.